Hello and welcome to Deep Blue Sea, the podcast. I am Mark. I miss Coffee Hoffmeyer. And I am Jay, untrained civilian, Cluett. Welcome you to Deep Blue Sea, the podcast. On this show, we've been through the entire Deep Blue Sea trilogy, scene by scene, now looking at some Deep Blue Sea adjacent films, or films that feature Deep Blue Scenes, uh, which is any scene revolving around the water or sharks. Like a think. glass of water. Yeah, just sitting by a lake, Rain. like that, a dam being in shot, that kind of thing. Because uh, we're currently in... Worry. Uh, this is our, the exact halfway point of our Hunger Games expedition <laughs> through the all five Hunger Games films, looking at the deep blue scenes in those. This is the Hunger Games, Walking Jay, part one, the one that doesn't have a lot of deep blue scenes in it. But that's okay, because Mark not only works on this film, Mark's in this film. <laughs> uh, kind of. He, showed, he told me a, a timestamp. I couldn't see him. <laughs> but he's in there, apparently... Deep background. <laughs> you can see my head. And I'm kind of annoyed because I spent, so I worked, I, I was, it was a day at the Marriott, which is in Atlanta. And it's just this beautiful hotel, looks futuristic. And what it was, was like, I was brought in and then there was a bunch of baby PAs. And so every baby PA had a floor of the hotel because the hotel was still open while they were repelling everybody like down. And so the baby PAs just had to run around and be like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. like we're, we're, we're rolling, stuff like that. And so, I was like, okay, today I'll be in charge of like 20, 20 kids, you know, while they're locking up the floors. But then they needed extra guards. And then I got called down to set and it happened before. Like I was, I got pulled in before and they're like, Hey, Mark, like get in this peacekeeper suit. So I went and got in this really cumbersome peacekeeper suit. It was pretty awesome though. And then I had to put this big wrap around it. So then, and then what I would have to do is I would have to lay dead and the AD there would like put me in the, he put me in the most uncomfortable position. And so my knee and neck would lock up by the time that they had gotten to the ground. And like, I almost lost, like I almost had to move a few times. Like I wasn't a good dead person. Then I had to go run up and downstairs, check in all the PAs, run back down, play dead, run back up. So it was a day in a really hot outfit covered up in a, like a hotter blanket. So no one could take pictures of me. Then I was in charge of the baby PAs, but I got two P paychecks. Nice. That'll do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so is that, is that the shot you're in? Is in a peacekeeper outfit. Yeah, I'm just dead in the background. Because uh, the time, uh, so we're, we're we're caught up again in the different timestamps in America and, and English yeah. versions. <laughs> oh, maybe that's I, why. I was, I was looking at uh, one of the scenes in the underground District 13 bunker oh. uh, where um, uh, Julianne Moore was at like her command center with loads of people on, on computers in the background. Like Mark's on one of these computers. He says, "This is the timestamp." <laughs> oh different man! Scene. <laughs> now I was just laying dead. You could right, see no me worries. laying dead. But it, you know, you get double pay. And it's a good it's story. Great. Yeah. I was hunting for the picture today to send you, but I don't, I don't know where it is. But yeah. And then also when during like the big speeches that a uh, coin makes, I was in charge of the people. There was, there was people on the ground. There was a second row and a third row. And I was in charge of the people in the third row. So it was like a hundred people. You had to get them through hair, make a wardrobe. It was like 17 degrees in the warehouse we shot in in December. It was crazy. Yeah. That's and, uh, yeah, I spent like 12 hours in a refrigerator with, with those people just listening to speeches and Julianne Moore and, Philip Seymour Hoffman and like just the stack cast. I, I said nothing to them because you're professional, but I was like, man, Philip Seymour, like he's just sitting there next to me. Yeah. I Shut mean, up, Mark. Maybe one of the best actors <laughs> just, just to ever. I mean, I mean, you can't necessarily tell from these films because I mean, this is when he was having his most troublesome time. I'm not saying he's bad in these, not at all, uh, but this isn't his peak work. I feel like these were kind of maybe paycheck roles, but he's still, he's still playing the part. Uh, but this is when, like, you know, he passed away of an overdose during the filming of these two yep. films. Uh, <laughs> sad times, but I love, I love and miss him so much every day. Just, it's, it seems like everyone did this movie because of their family. Julia Moore yeah, did it because sure. of her daughters. Donald Sutherland did it because of his granddaughters. Like everyone just, you better be in these movies, Grandpa or Mom <laughs> or Uncle. Yeah, like, go pop in these movies. But yeah, this one, Jay. It's not as much of a slog as I remembered. Yes, me too. I, I this is my lowest ranked on Letterboxd, but and I, I couldn't remember a lot about what happened, but it was it went through quicker than I thought it was gonna. Uh, yeah. and it's it's got the, the least amount of like deep blue sea adjacent films, but it is the deepest. I didn't work it out, but <laughs> oh, they spend yes, a, a lot what? of time uh forty stories underground. <laughs> uh they said they said everyone head down to level forty. That's pretty damn deep. <laughs> um Wow, did you just take like forty stories up and just throw it down? Is I that didn't even what you... think about how deep it was. I didn't. I didn't look at that. But like, they don't go under. I, they don't really go underground in any of the other 
films, uh, unless well, they never really say where the arenas are, and they can't. Uh. It's, so they, they could be fully underground for all you know, because it's, it's a fully possibly hologram environment. I don't know, uh, but they go underground in Mockingjay Part Two a bit, but here they're like, you know, the core level un- underground. <laughs> they're like going down there. They're journey into the center of the earth. It was a long trip down up. there. They dug some tunnels, Jay. And that's like when there's that the air raid going on, they're all on the stairs, and the, the sprinklers are going off, so it's kind of it's, it's water rushing downstairs. All these people running downstairs. It's kind of deep blue sea. You can yeah. There's no there's no sharks around, but mm-hmm. yeah. I'm surprised they didn't find like a Balrog digging that deep. <laughs> different different franchise, but yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Like poor Katniss. It's just her life is horrifying, you know, just pulled into these games, killing people, losing her friends. People are brainwashed. Her friends are getting tortured. Lots of death all around her. And then a ball wrong. Not just brainwashed. Brainwashed to kill her. Yeah. (laughs) And other people. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. So I did some counting here. And, you know, like, there's like a peacekeepers kill somebody in the rain. Elizabeth Banks says, I miss coffee. At one point, they're drinking from a stream. There's like a like a deer drinking from a stream. They sit by a quarry, which has also been used yep. at Stranger Things. Stranger Things use that quarry for a lot That's of their cool. filming in the first season. They blow up a hydroelectric dam. They do. That's a pretty yes. gnarly scene. That is a pretty great sequence. Yeah. And then they save a cat in the rain. And also Hamish dries out. Like they have to dry him out. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the opposite of it wet. Is the opposite. But he's getting dry. Yeah, it's, it's on that spectrum of, of wetness. It's just, you know, the wrong side. But that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll take it. I hadn't even considered that. Uh, uh, Would yeah, you go I, back for your dogs? I'd go back for my cats. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't go back for them. They'd be with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're living like in a, post- them. <laughs> like a post-apocalyptic concrete hellscape in a district that's been a, like obliterated. Yeah. If you left I, your animals behind, just give up. I don't know. You know what I mean? Just you gotta save yeah. them. You gotta save the cat. Absolutely. I mean, I have two. I can. I can. Hmm. I'd give Carrie and them both a go, but I don't think. I don't. They follow me. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That'd be all right. Man, I get uh, scratched up so bad. My cat Stella would light me up. Ghost would just be like, "I'm a good boy," and Stella would be like, "You're saving my life. I'm gonna kill you with my claws." That's what um, it would be like. I'm leaving my neighbor's dog. That dog is leaving <laughs> that behind because I, I walk Aww. every day. And, well, he's he bites me. <laughs> so you would look he, at a dog and be like, "Too bad, bozo." I, and if if it's away. between him and my dogs, then I'm terrible saving my dogs, and I'm leaving uh, the spaniel that often bites me behind. <laughs> I'm, I'm making that choice now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay if it comes down to that. But if you had time, if would I had you yeah, it? if I had time, I'd take Bailey. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd bring him with if I had if I if I could. I guess. <laughs> he's he's almost 10 he's had a good run you know what's crazy about this movie it made 766 million dollars at the box office and it's you, and then you know the next one which is more action-packed only made 646 which is odd because that's the one i saw in the cinema i've only seen one hunky game in the cinema the one, and it's mocking j part two uh i mean i think yeah i just went to watch it because i worked on it and i was like this is cool like, I, I worked on this. Yeah, makes sense. And then, but like, you know, listen, if with, okay, I have a question. Without Jennifer Lawrence anchoring this movie, like, let's say someone like. Shailene what, Woodley. Hmm, she could do it. What, who's the, who's the Emily and Perry? Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I never watched that show. She, Emily, like, Emily in Paris is Lily Allen. Uh, no. so Lily Collins, Phil Collins' Li- daughter. Yeah, if this was her in 2014, no. Like if this was most people, no. But like Lawrence has to go to some dark places in this movie. She does. Yeah. I mean, like you said, she's had a tough old life, <laughs> and it doesn't get any like doesn't get much better <laughs> in these next couple of films. <laughs> what do you think about the blinking lights during the scene where they are attacking the Capitol to save PETA in uh, district 13? Remember all yeah. the blinking lights? I'm like, 
I, I don't remember the brain thing I was getting. Are they like little little like consoles of lights or is it overhead lights that flash? Oh, it's it's you know Never. I don't normally pay attention to blinking lights, but this one was like this is excessive. And it was just I like watching Philip Seymour Hoffman watch computer screens. The cast is insane, man. Mahershala Ali. Right. I mean, there's like, a, a, a sequence crazy. early on where you have Julianne Moore, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Mahershala Ali. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence, all in the same room. Jeffrey Wright, maybe too. Je- Jeffrey Wright, yep. I'm just thinking like the Oscars in this room. <laughs> I mean, Mahershala hasn't got any yet, but soon he's going to have two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two back to back years. Oh man. <laughs> and, you know what's kind of crazy too? West Chatham is caster in this, and I was a big fan. I'm a big fan of The Expanse. Like I love The Expanse. She's perfect in that show. And then everyone, you know, I like Daredevil, and I liked. Eldon Henson. The Mighty Ducks, so Eldon Henson's popping on there as yeah. Pollux. Then you get, what, Natalie Dormer. Yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah she's precedent. cool. Well, like, and you've got, uh, did you ever watch Prison Break? Oh, uh, wait, are you talking Robert Nepper? Robert Nepper. Yeah. Tea bags in this film. <laughs> <laughs> I love Prison Break when it was fun. Um, and oh, but yeah, tea bags in this. I bet he's a bad guy. Uh, yes, of course he's a bad guy. <laughs> he's, he's got another one of those evil faces. You know, he knows the roles he plays. Yeah, he plays yeah. bad guys. And then, like, Jenna Malone pops up, and then Sam Claflin's like, yeah, President Snow used to process, like, you know, sell me out for sex and stuff like that. And you're like, jeez Louise, this movie is, is, this is, yeah. Oof. But I mean, I guess in the first one, that, you know, Rue is killed, and Katniss just murders Quaid in a very yeah. blunt fashion. See, with the, the Harry Potter franchise, you kind of, that was aimed at, people who were the same age as, as the kids i think so you kind of grew up with the films you don't get as much chance to do that with hunger games there's only there are only four back when they were in this original kind of series so it, it goes pretty hard pretty quick <laughs> uh, when, yeah. like, at this point like my god this is i'm getting ptsd from watching this film like yeah it's 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 tough it's heavy <laughs> it's heavy and it's just it's legitimately Two hours and three minutes of just weight on your chest. Yeah. Like, and it, it ends, it doesn't end with like satisfying, like, okay, this has been like a nice, we're building up to the next one. It ends with Peter trying to kill Katniss and like, <laughs> almost succeeding. And then like the start of the next one, which he can't talk because of how much damage he's done to her, her trachea. Just. Jeez, please. <laughs> Even when Katniss has a good moment, like Katniss nails that ship with an arrow and then it mm-hmm. takes down another ship, but then they land on a hospital, but it knocks a huge thing over and a smokestack and it lands on a hospital and kills yeah. thousands. So like, even I, when you're yeah. supposed to cheer, it, it goes horrifyingly wrong. Yeah. But this is when we have her filming the, the propos as well, isn't it? Like where mm-hmm. you've got, uh, uh oh, there's some Kevin funny Spee. moments. There is. And I can like, where well, she's being directed, to, to say the lie and she says it once and it, she's not got like a lot of emotion in it and Philip Seymour is like you've just come out of battle <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, I can really relate to oh, that's in this hilarious. Scene. I've been in that situation you wouldn't think it to look at me but I have done some modeling I've I, my, I've done some photo shoots oh, I believe it, stuff for my wife and, and for her work and being the person who's like okay I'm just going to pretend to make some chocolates now and like, what do I do? What do? You get, you get so many instructions fired at you of like, look up, smile, your thumb's doing that weird thing again, and it's, it's just so many things you gotta keep in your mind at all times. It's impossible. I'm not built for much for that, that kind of thing. And uh, you, okay, pretend to to draw this thing. You ever try to pretend to draw something that's already been drawn on camera, where you like you're adding something to it, and you. But try not to ruin it because some professional artist has made this. I've had to do that several times, and it's impossible. <laughs> like, you need to actually be drawing, but you can't. You've got to make a mark, but it can't ruin this thing that someone else has done. <laughs> it's so frustrating. When a camera's on you, you'd be surprised <laughs> at how much you shut down. Mm. Like, yeah. You know, I, I had to deal with extras for many years, and just having them walk on camera was hard. Sure. Like, some, yeah. Like you would have them talk, okay, pantomime, pantomime a conversation, and they would just be doing like fish lips, like. Bruh, 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 bruh. I was like, what are you? I was like, that's not a conversation. Like, well, I don't know. Like, I was like, just say peas and carrots. Come yeah, on. Yeah, just, just say, hey, how are you? Oh, I am good. And then just, you know, say something, like say the lyrics of a thing, and then nod. Like it's, 
It's just don't go like this. And you're just going, oh my gosh. Like when we had to do the oorah thing for this, it was like oorah. But it's like a very discordant oorah. Yeah. Like that took forever. Everyone was just laughing because they kept messing it up. So yeah, I get it, Jay. I've had to act before. I'm terrible at it. It's yeah, it's. it's I, mean, I, I I have respect for for actors. People are like, oh, it's the easiest job. I, I work with people who are like, acting so easy. I I I respect stage actors because they have to. They can't make a mistake. But film actors, they they do it wrong. They just do it again and again and again and again. It's like yeah, but if they do it wrong, then that's so much time, so many people's time that they're wasting to do it again. If they if they're on a Clint Eastwood set, they can't do it again. He's probably <laughs> yeah, the next no. thing already. Move, like, move, move. <laughs> Man, it's you know it's you know I was on the show called Swamp Murders and I got I got whole, I was yeah I I, I was uh, you know a PA on it and they needed cult members for this church scene and so this is this is like there's a scene where like the the congregation just had to be nodding yes and smiling sure but I, I so in my head I was like yeah I'm just nodding yes and I'm smiling then they later on when they're watching playback they're like oh man Mark like. We got you. We, we're gonna hire you as the next serial killer because you look creepy as hell in this shot. <laughs> you were pretty on board with that swamp murder. Like, but in my head though, I, I thought I was just nodding, going, "Yeah, hey, this is cool. Yeah, good job, Pastor. You know, like, hey." But then I saw it, and I was like, "Oh my gosh! Like, what am I doing? Like, I, I looked like, like Freddy Krueger, like Robert Englund, like it's just going, yeah, yeah." Like, and and it, but I didn't think I was. Like you, you have no idea what's happening when a camera goes on you. So I yeah, get it, Jay. Yeah. If you're if you're doing all that, don't do that thing with your thumb. We you just like putting in your nose I, or ear I have, or what? I have weird. I have like my thumbs bent back really far. Uh, just yeah. So do yours. It's fine. My, hey. It freaks it freaks my wife out. She goes to people. She tells people before they meet me like he has weird thumbs. Look out for the weird thumbs. And like I don't. I, I've done origami for years, so I just kind of my thumbs bend back a little bit far. And everyone just really picks up on it because she like wants people check out his weird thumbs and they're just they're just thumbs that bend they're back thumb, a little bit great looking they're thumbs just, they're just thumbs they're just normal thumbs and um, yeah i'm not i'm when, not conscious about them at all when you give thumbs up do you curl it or do you like when you do a throw up a thumb uh I don't, not intentionally but uh I don't, that's I, weird I, I tried to straighten my thumb to do a thumbs up and it looked kind of odd yeah it, it, it needs to be upright Thumb, We've learned uh, a lot about each other today, Jay. The, the tip of the thumb should point to the sky. It's thumbs <laughs> up, not thumbs over there. You know. It's... Wait, so you're more like so it's not thumb twelve o'clock. It's more like thumb three three o'clock. No, I I I, <laughs> I orient the rest of my hand so that thumb is twelve o'clock. Another <laughs> <laughs> hand point, points down a little bit. <laughs> Wait, oh, you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this oh. is an entirely audio podcast with me and what's Mark your, doing thumbs what's up your favorite moment? What's your favorite water moment in this movie? Uh, I mean, I, I like all the running downstairs. Cause that's, that's, there's some action going on there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, no, it's got to be the assault on the dam. It's got to be the assault on the dam. Cause that's, that's, it's just all these hordes of... What, what district is it? Like District 5 or something? Uh, where there's just all these people just charging at this dam. And it's just it's fodder. So people just people just running willingly into gunfire for the, for the greater good. And... Just taking that dam down, uh, yeah. Bringing that capital down one one dam at a time. It's another um, brutal scene. It is, it is, and like none of our hero, we don't know anyone that's in it. It's all just extras, all just randoms. Uh, which you know, if if anyone was in it, they'd have died. Like that's <laughs> not a lot of people get out of that scene alive. But I guess taking down the power was important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's your What's your favorite scene? <sighs> oh man, yeah. I mean. It's not it's not the singing part. The dam just looks good. I'm gonna say the dam. Yeah. I like that. That was nice. And also like going back for the cat. I would go save my cat. You gotta save the cat. I feel like uh for people who hadn't seen the previous Tony Games films, this is like Cat is the good person. She went back and saved the cat. Like, it's it's that moment. Cause she, like she's at di she's at the district twelve wreckage and she finds the cat and brings the cat back. Like mm -hmm. so she, how, would your cats enjoy being stuffed in a bag? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, it would be horrifying. <laughs> it would be very bad. But this is a different kind of cat. This, this like, cat is She unkillable. legitimately screams in its face in the next one. She did not need to go back and save it in the District 13. It would have survived. That place could have been bombed and it would have survived. That cat is immortal. Yeah, it's one of those kind of cats. Yeah. Yeah. It travels yeah, so it's... far in the next film. <laughs> Just on its no own. wonder it's grumpy. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's... It, it just brings back cool memories of working here, uh, working on it. 
just long nights and like 17 degree weather showing up at 5 a.m. getting out at like 9 p.m. Yeah, it was cool. And then, you know, I was, I mean, you know, it's funny back in that day, I, I was talking to my buddy Clayton Thompson, who became an AD uh, assistant director on a lot of sets. And he was a guest on the show. He did the As Above on the Movie Stones and Flicks podcast. He did As Above So Below. And that night, I think it was probably like 2013, 2014, something like that. And I just remember he and I sitting there in the Marriott while I'm covered, dressed as a peacekeeper, covered in this thing. I had a few minutes of downtime and he and I just kind of had this conversation about like, man, we got to we got to do something with our lives. Like, we're just sitting here doing this. <laughs> like, like we're just sitting there like stone troopers. Yeah. Like, we're just talking like we got to like make it our own way. And now like he became an AD and he's he's he directed and wrote a movie. Now he just wrote a movie. He sent me the the link to screen it. I haven't watched it yet. I need to. I'm a bad friend. But yeah, he's like writing and directing and he's. He's like making big pitches and he's he's getting his screenplays out. And then, you know, I started my writing career. And so it was kind of cool that like we were both like we got to we got to do something like we can't just spend our lives sitting on film sets, even though they're cool and we had good gigs. But then we we both he like he's doing it. So I'm proud of him. Like it was cool. Like we had that conversation. We did something. Sometimes you have those conversations with people and they don't do anything. So it's nice when you have those conversations. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm, I'm happy but, for you both. <laughs> This is before I met you. It is, yes. Much I was. This was life another was. life. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think but it, it, I, I put like, together a list. Do you want to hear it of my favorite extra moments? I would love to. I I didn't because I haven't been one. Um, okay. I'd love to hear yours. So when I moved to Atlanta in 2010, you know, I really didn't have much money, and you know, my wife and I, like my wife Megan, girlfriend, fiance, like we were like, she was making like 25k a year. I had very little money in my pocket. We were in this tiny one bedroom apartment and like, I just needed work. I had no work. So I just would go around, knock on doors, work for like 50 bucks a day, work for free a day. And then I found out about being an extra. So I started applying to be an extra because it paid like 65 bucks for eight, not much money, but I had no money. So I just needed money. And I immediately get my first role. I got cast for was team wolf and I got cast to be a, t a swim coach speaking of water. So I got oh, a pay yeah. bump. So I, I, I went from being from 65 to $115 nice. for the day. And so it was my job to walk around and be a like Panama and be a swim coach. And I didn't know anything about lines yet or how you got paid for it. And they were like, Hey, we got a swim coach here. Let's just give him a line. Like, and then, then like, we'll just move on. And I, I, I didn't push for it because I didn't know what it meant. But now I know if I would have done it, I would have gotten like 1500 bucks become sag and then probably getting paid again i'll say you can be getting residuals from it yeah yeah <laughs> and but i didn't think about that because it was my first job ever yeah but yeah i uh that was my first gig it was a featured extra role i had to go buy shorts for it because i'm like what do swim coaches wear so i had to go find <laughs> red swim trunks for it so that was but that was cool like i got paid extra and and then you know i i thought I was in good with the other people i used to show up to the team most set I would walk on the set with my resume and hand it to people. Be like, hey, you guys hiring? They're like, no, get off our set. And then so eventually, like, to get there legally, they're like, oh, you're back. I'm like, no, but I'm an extra this time. Don't worry about it. I mean, like, yeah, famously, you went, you applied for an acting role to get on set to give your your uh, <laughs> CV in. <laughs> We've discussed this from Con Aaron. That still gives me nightmares, Jay. <laughs> that still gives me like, knowing how bad that audition was and how angry they were at me. <laughs> like, oh, that was terrible. Oh. But that's what I would do, man. Like, that's what you got to do to get work. I know I, I had to get money. So yeah, I, I did that. Man, I was, an, I was a maniac back then, but it got me work. So yeah, that, that's one of my favorite. And then later on, I did a bunch of commercial work and I, I was moving up in the industry. I got a job on the following. It was the pilot episode of the Kevin Bacon serial killer show. Okay. And I got cast as a cop that had to carry James Purefoy out of a room. Like after Kevin Bacon. He's a big guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's a big dude. And he hit, yeah. and he hit me right in the, uh, in the first, I'll, I'll get to it, but he's handcuffed for real. He has real handcuffs on and he's handcuffed. And they're like, Mark, you got to run in there with this tiny key while Kevin Bacon's roughing him up. And you have to stick the key in the lock, unlock him, take the lock, attach it to his waist and carry him out of the room. I was like, uh, yeah. oh, okay. And so your hands get sweaty. You have to listen to the whole scene. You run in, you unhandcuff him. One time he hit me right in the, uh, right in the spot. And I went, Hoo! and they're like, keep going. And so then I had to like handcuff him, put him back up, carry him out. I, 12 hours of that because all the oh coverage so i had to pick him up yeah, yeah. all day like I, I, we would just be chatting about like john carter i'm like what happened with that movie but they, like, i would just pick him up and like carry him out but i had to un, I, it was so stressful man because i had to unhandcuff him every time and i got double pay again i was a pa and a and like a extra but it was kind of kind of crazy because kevin williamson 
like the guy who wrote it, the guy who wrote Scream yeah. and yeah, the yeah. big name. He's like, what was going on with those handcuffs, man? You were having a lot of trouble with those. And I was like, and I was like, they they were real. I was like, I really had to like unlock them. And, you know, I was like, I thought I was doing pretty good. He's like, wait, those are real. Those weren't just like, boop, take off. And like, those yeah. weren't just like fake. I'm like, no, those are real handcuffs. And I really had to unlock it. And while he's fighting, getting ripped on by Kevin Bacon. And then I had to reattach. It. He's like, oh, okay. You did pretty good then. Like, handcuffs so, are supposed to be difficult to take off because they're yeah. supposed to not be able to take off. Yeah. That's the point. I, I, I wanted to go into a dark room and just – I don't smoke cigarettes, but I wanted a cigarette and like a cheap – the cheapest blended scotch possible and just sit in a dark room because was, it was so stressful. And then when he said that to me, I was like, oh, no. Um, but then but he was like, oh, okay, you you did fine. And then we got a, a – our wrap gift was like a water bottle with following season one on it. I remember that. But, yeah, that was a stressful day, Jay. But it was it was a good feature. Like, yeah. Um, and then the next one, I like probably one of my favorite, I, I told the swamp murders one already. I talked about hunger games three. I was a government goon in resurrection season two. So this okay. is probably like 2015, maybe, uh, 20. Yeah, no, this is 2014. Cause that's the year we bought our house. So I was working on resurrection and they needed a, a goon. So this is like the third time I've been pulled into a thing to be like a cop or a thing, like a cop or a peacekeeper. And so I play this goon and uh, Omar Epps gets knocked out. He hands me a bag. I take it. He gets knocked out. Then me and this other dude walk him out. But I swear to you, man, one time we almost like his uh, Omar Epps head. He's unconscious. And we dragged him. We we missed his head in the camera by like one inch one time. We went too far. and We almost like rammed Omar Epps into the camera. That would have been crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but it was fun, man. Like, I was pretty featured in that. Like I. I was I was hanging out, got handed a bag, and then had to carry a dude out of a room. So that was nice. fun. I got double pay on that. And then also uh, American Reunion. I worked. I was at the party scene for that, and like I got to hang out and talk with Sean William Scott about like cool movies, like super nice guy. But then they're like, hey, we need somebody cool. Like we need some people to do some stuff. And so they someone couldn't pour wine, so I became the wine pouring guy because someone couldn't pour wine, which is odd. Sure. And they they put dialogue into my mouth, like tell me when. And then I, I had to walk by John John Chu a couple times or John Cho a couple times. Yeah. And then there's a scene where Tara Reed comes in and she has to talk to me like I'm a friend of hers. And then while Rookie of the Year is looking at her and she walks up to me, and starts talking. Then I'm like, hey, it's all good. And they're like, oh, I was like, oh, man, I almost got a line. And then they're like, OK, Tara, you talk and then you you pantomime. So she's like, hey, how you doing? And I was like, oh. Pantomiming, and she's like, "Yeah, this is gonna work for me." So then we both had to pantomime. So when she's looking at Rookie of the Year, she's talking to me in there. But that was cool, man. I almost got another line. I tried to. That's, I mean, that's that's how Brad Pitt has died. He was an extra, and he he was like a waiter in a scene. Uh, he came in and um just put a line in himself, and the director's like, "Cut!" And like, "Don't ever do that again." And just told him off. <laughs> so you know, you could have been the next Brad Pitt. You're almost Dude. there. You know, you know, it's interesting. There's a couple of what ifs that I have. I, I I worked on Three Stooges and I was at the party scene and, you know, I was dressed up in a suit. I was real professional. I, I was PA in commercials at the time, but I had to take a bunch of other jobs just to get money. Like you just you just got to get money. And sure. there's like 200 people, really hot day. They put all these chairs and all these extras just made this gigantic mess of like 200 chairs. So I just started putting the chairs back. So like I organized like 200 chairs like because I. I knew what I was doing. Like I'd been on the sets before. So I organized everything, got everything set up, walked away. Like the main ED comes up to me and he goes, Hey man, like you were like a total like bro today. And we'd love to have you back next week for a very small scene and you'll be really featured. But the problem was I had committed to being a PA the next week for like five days. And you just don't cancel a job when you, yeah. when you are in the industry, you don't want to burn that bridge. So I was like, Hey, I really appreciate it. But you know, I, I I'm committed next week and I, I just, you know, I don't want to cancel. Like the guy kind of looked at me like I was crazy, but okay, I wonder if I could have had a line in that scene. Cause they liked me a lot in that. Yeah. I don't know if like three stooges launched a lot of careers. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I, I never saw it, uh, <laughs> but then it's directed by uh, Oscar winner. So who yeah. knows? You could have been in green, but with the Mahershala. Oh, I could have been Vigo. You could have been Vigo. You could have folded hey. up some pizza. I drive a pizza. I drive a car and eat pizza. That would have been I win an Oscar. It's that easy, right? I think I think so. Yeah, but oh, I think yeah. I didn't win. 
uh, but he was uh, great. Yeah. There's one more show. I think it's like Drop Dead Diva. I showed up to be a bailiff one day, and the the main guy looked at me. He's like, "No, he's too L.A." <laughs> I guess I looked like L.A. actors, because like you know, I used to be like real skinny and like ripped and like real like well groomed. So I guess I okay. looked kind of like manicured. And then he's like, "You're too L.A." I was like, "I don't even know what that means. Like, I've never been to L.A." No, I've been to like no, I, I had worked in Anaheim by then, but I hadn't worked in L.A. But I remember that. So then I didn't get to do anything that day. I just had to sit in the back and stew and be angry and get paid yeah. for nothing. Well, it's very, very LA. <laughs> but yeah, that was, I don't know, man, like there's some fun stories from it and, and, uh, you know, it kept money in my pocket. So that was kind of yeah. cool. I got double pay. But yeah, that's probably the best I got for this, for this Hunger Games 3. <laughs> Nice, nice. Well, I mean, we've we've gone far and beyond uh, the notes that I had for this <laughs> uh, for this, this film. <laughs> uh, so I think I think that'll do it for for Hunger Games Part One. There is uh, a couple more to talk about in in Hunger Games Part uh, Mockingjay Part Two. So uh, don't you worry, listeners. Next month we're gonna talk about some real deep blue scenes there. But uh, you just got to it, listen to me talk a lot this episode. I mean, so I'm good. always happy to listen to you talk about your your. <laughs> film uh, exploits they're very interesting and you didn't even get into like the goosebumps and the other films that you've been in oh man and, and the uh, guardians of the galaxy 2 oh go. yeah <laughs> well i wasn't in any of those you're on set you were there yeah oh yeah no i spent a lot of time on those that was cool i, I worked i was on over 150 sets jay nice i why is i like why is none of this stuff on your imdb page why oh. are you like credit i don't know, i've just worked i don't i'm not that guy like, I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to be like, Mark Hoffmeyer has been on 150. You know what I mean? Like, I'm never. That's the difference between me and you. I would, I would, I would have all these credits. I would be in there adding my own stuff on IMDb. And I, I don't know. But I, <laughs> I work, you know, I, I guess I've just been busy. I don't really think about, you know what I mean? Like, I just kind of. Yeah, yeah. I just. Mm. And it's like extra roles. To LA. Like, that's not. Sometimes you see people who are like, extra, like you know, I know this sounds bad, but like, they're just kind of extras or you know like some that kind of role and that's great you're you're you know if you're in la and new york you're making a good living in the union but they're kind of acting like yeah i'm the star of this movie like i just walked around in the background and got double pay like there's nothing big about it but it's kind of fun like it was just fun to get paid twice or to be on these sets yeah i mean i I just make there's around a hundred uh uncredited people listed on imdb for mocking j part one yeah it could be one of those yeah but well you're not uh, but you I don't want to be. You should, I know, but you you have every right to be. But these are all people who I think are still working in the industry. So like trying to so this help helps their careers. So I don't I don't uh, I'm not saying they shouldn't have done this at all. Uh, more power to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just I don't know. That's not my style. I'm not, that doesn't mean it can't be other people's. I'm just not. Yeah. I don't know. I just talked about myself a lot, and I'm saying it's not my style. But I'm proud of my film days, Jay. Like I I worked on some cool things, and I think it helped me as a you know, talking about movies because at least I understand how the the bread is baked. Yeah, the the, the, the bread pita's rain bread. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what, well, one really random story. I, okay. I was supposed to work on this show, but then they didn't need me, but they booked me, so they owed me. So then they sent me to be a stand-in on Walking Dead season two, but I was standing in for Scott Wilson, and he was like five nine, five ten, and I'm six three and a half. And like an old guy. Yeah, and everyone <laughs> looked at me like Ernest Dickerson was on set, man, like big director. And everyone looked at me like, and I was like, guys, like, I didn't lie. Like, I just got sent here. Like, uh, I kind of explained the situation. Like, all right, cool. Like, well, he's kneeling down. So go kneel over there. So, but it was really awkward me standing next to him. So, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> and there's other people that you could have, like, you could, you'd be better double for John Burnthal, I think, than for Scott. Scott Wilson. <laughs> um, yeah, that was an odd day. One day I had to stand in for John Hurt. On uh, Jay Mansfield's car. Okay, and he's sure. He is not tall. Because so you were normally to, you were Ray Winston's. Yeah, Ray Winston, Ray Stevenson. Stevenson. Yeah. Um, but I had to like stand with my legs wide open <laughs> to be as tall as him because you can't squat the whole time. Yeah, that's gonna kill you hamstrings. So I just remember yeah. that I was like standing with my legs wide open. It was John Hurt to get to his height? It was an odd I, day, man. Yeah, yeah. It sounds. Like- <laughs> Not many people can say that they uh, they did the splits to pretend to be John Hurt for a day. <laughs> uh, <so. laughs> 
Great. Well, that's going to do it for Hunger Games Walking J Part 1. Uh, listeners, you can find this podcast all over social media at Deep Blue Sea Pod. Uh, uh, Mark, all of your stuff is moviesfilmsandflicks.com. Any other plugs beyond that? Um, I have a cool by the numbers video coming out for post-apocalypse stuff. So go to fandom by the numbers. And I'm writing another script about minions for film theory. So go check that out. Nice. And uh, if you, you can find me at lifefestivefilm.com. I have finally, at the time of recording this, yeah. finally finished my uh, 2023 films ranking uh, three months into the year. Uh, great. Uh, but next week on this show, we're back to, to shark nonsense, talking about A Tank, the, uh, the Bollywood shark film with Will Slater coming back to talk about that. We had a real fun time talking about that one. Uh, but as for Hunger Games, Walking J Part 1, I have been Jay Clover. And I'm Mark Offmeyer. And we'll deep blue see you next week. Sayonara. Sayonara.